office is at Young and Shepherd. I share office space with a bunch of other uh, professionals, lawyers and various other professionals. My practice is mainly real estate law, uh, corporate and commercial law, wills and estates, powers of attorney, contract reviews, uh, things like that. Um, one thing I've spoken to you guys about a lot in the past is title insurance. And I'm not going to speak about it now, but I brought some brochures for you to take. They're on the table there. The skinny one is about residential title insurance, and the wider one is about commercial title insurance. So if you want more information about it, they're on the table there. Um, uh, certain areas of law that I don't do, such as matrimonial law, I refer to other lawyers, such as Howard, and other lawyers who do that kind of thing refer their real estate work to me. Um, a lot of what I do is wills and powers of attorney. Uh, there's a lot of confusion uh, a lot of people have about wills and powers of attorney. The powers of attorney only take effect while you're alive. As soon as you pass away, the power of attorney is in over effect. The will is the total opposite. The will only takes effect upon your death. So while you're alive, your will has, has no uh, validity. Which is why you can change your will whenever you want. Because it's only the last will that matters. So when I do wills for clients, I always tell them that this, is, this will is for now. You should review the will every couple of years, see if you want any changes. And review the will whenever there's a major change in your life, such as you've married, you're divorced, you have kids, you've acquired new assets, you've changed your business. Whenever anything major changes, you should review your will and make sure it's still what you want. Because people often say, uh, um, how old is a will, how old does a will have to be to be updated? And the answer is it has nothing to do with how old it is. A will from 20 years ago could be perfectly fine. Someone else's will from six months ago could be updated because it all depends on what changes there's been in their life. When it comes to powers of attorney, there's two kinds of powers of attorney. There's a power of attorney for property, which is where you give somebody the authority to deal with your assets. Like sign checks on your bank account, deal with your property, things like that. Then there's a power of attorney for personal care, and that's when you give somebody the authority to make medical decisions for you and personal care decisions for you. And uh, in the power of attorney for personal care, you can either leave it very general and say this person has the right to make medical decisions for me, or you can be very specific and say these are the kind of decisions that I want this person to make. It's a completely uh, personalized, individualized document. Um, I want to leave the next few minutes open just for any questions you guys have, either about wills, powers of attorney, real estate, uh, corporate law, anything else. Yeah. You mentioned that wills can be, should be changed when there's been a change. Like how yeah. often do, should you review a power of attorney? Well, make changes the same. Necessary. Well, the only time you really have to review a power of attorney is if there's a change in your relationship with the person that you've named as your attorney. So if you've named someone as your attorney because you were very close with them and you trusted them, and then life happens and you lose touch with them and you're no longer that close with them, you may want to name someone else. Or maybe they've moved out of Ontario or moved out of Canada, and it's not going to be practical for them to, to do it for you. So really, again, it depends on change of circumstances. So can a power of attorney for, for property be used to make bank account changes yep. and stuff like that? Yeah. The yep. bank will accept it? Yep. Okay. As long as it's properly signed and witnessed. Yeah. Uh, flat fee to make a will? Yeah. Or? Uh, well, it depends. 99% of the time it's a flat fee. Um, a will is typically about $400. That's for a typical standard will. If you want a very, very complicated will with all sorts of trusts and complicated provisions, then it's going to be a lot more. But your typical standard will is about 400 So how much is the power of attorney? The power of attorney is 200 So it's 600 for the package. Right? Well, a power of attorney for property is 200 and a power of attorney for personal care okay, is 200 So if you want all three documents, a yeah. will and a power of attorney for property and a power of attorney for personal care, it's four and two and two. So that's it. Okay. Perry? Well, I'm just I'm concerned, like, what is the process? Someone passes away. How does the executor know that they're the executor? How does the will get done? That's a good question. How does the process yeah, work? That's a good question. When you name someone as an executor, it's very important to, number one, let them know that you've named them as the executor. Uh, number two, find out whether they will agree to be the executor. You could name someone and they could renounce it 10 minutes from the job. So there's no point in naming someone unless they've agreed to do it. And number three is you let the executor know where your will is, whether it's in your safety deposit box, whether it's with your lawyer, or whatever it is. So they should know that they are the executor and where the will is located. Should they have a copy of the will? That's, I don't recommend giving them a copy of the will because you could change the will later. And when you change a will, you don't want people to see what was in the previous one. Yeah, okay. And the will While they're alive, the power of attorney takes over. Okay. Once they pass away, the will takes over. Talk about the responsibilities of an executor when a con in terms of finances, in, in general, and, but specifically in terms of finances. Okay, basically, I think it's important for people to know what the responsibility is. What an executor is. does, first of all, is makes, makes the funeral arrangements. 
and then has to collect uh, <coughs> all the assets that the deceased person had and all the debts that they had. They have to look at the will. They have to notify the beneficiaries of the will that they have been left, whatever it is, under, under the will. They have to file final income tax returns for the deceased, open up a bank account for the estate, uh, collect all the assets. Some assets are going to be collected as they are and distributed. Some are going to have to be cashed in. It all depends what the investments are. Um, and, uh, sorry. What happens if there's not enough assets to pay the liabilities of the estate? What's the executor's responsibility? Well, the executor's responsibility is to first pay the debts. Okay, I understand. Okay. If there's, what if there's, after not, that, enough if, to cover those if there's not enough assets, then that's the end of it. The estate is facing the bank. So there's no monetary responsibility no. in terms of the no. estate. 